state, as you know, uh, with the new administration committed to the UNSC uh, uh, cycle. We're actually looking, the Obama administration is looking for 10 million jobs in the next decade from new energy, and 10 million net new jobs by 2030. That's 10 million jobs. Uh, that's a lot of jobs, and, and frankly, it's the only sector that can generate these jobs in the United States. Also, having on the engine the repatriation of our trillion dollar energy budget. Um, that's the budget that we, um, the money we export to other countries for energy. And energy independence is now a national security mandate. Um, our company negotiated its partnership with the Department of Energy during the Bush administration, uh, not because the Bush administration loved an alternative energy, but because, driven by our military, there was a move towards energy independence. What are the challenges? Let me call it the, I call it the 2030-2060 gap, and I'll get into that. Uh, and what is this new model to overtake control? We have a situation now where CO2 emissions are spiraling out of control. You see now that we're just shy of 400 on that chart. Um, that is moving very quickly uh, into the higher range. And as Dr. Nose pointed out, that has dire effects. The uh, vast amount of uh, CO2 being emitted is, of course, increasing. Carbon dioxide levels uh, will go to nearly, to nearly three times the current levels by the end of the century. Wipe out of plant species, you've seen all this. But here's the last thing, acceleration. Dr. Nozick was talking about 2050. Um, I don't think that's, I think that's optimistic. I think the better number is 2030. we got to look at what it's going to take to solve this problem by 2030. And that's in line, of course, with Al Gore's organization. So, current approaches. Right now, the idea is to limit carbon outputs. Um, I went to some peer research that showed that if you kept CO2 capped, right now we are roughly at 400 parts per million. I think we're at 380 or something. So, if you achieve the impossible, somehow capped CO2 at the current levels, what would you get? This is from um, a well-reviewed uh, study, which I can get to you on. For first results here, uh, unintended consequences. Because oil and natural gas are uh, and cleaner than coal, we will exhaust every single gigaton of carbon that's currently in the ground in a carbon limitation scenario. Uh, and uh, what does that mean in terms of the um, energy supply? Let's take a look at that. Interesting graph. It's the same study. For balance of the century, we've got... Um, here we go. Oil maintains its share, as I pointed out earlier, all the way to 2060. It only starts turning off then. Biomass, the circled part there, absorbs energy's growth, which is a good, good news. Uh, by 2060, oil tails off, finally. Biomass plateaus, coal, coal comes back clean, and that's 2060. Wind never becomes a factor, and solar just starts out. You say, well, wait a minute, we've been hearing about wind and solar. This is a situation where all you do is just limit the carbon and let things play out. And this is what happens. One thing is clear, we don't solve it by 2030 using the current approaches. Conclusions. <coughs> the problem is controlling. The current approaches are not enough, and we do need a new model to overtake control. What are the components? Technology innovation. Entrepreneur adoption and technology export. In technology innovation, we've got to behave more like the internet of the 90s. I came to my uh, algae to oil company from high tech. I'm a child of disruptive marketing. That's where we're going, and that's how we better think about it. It's not like something like the TVA, where we threw billions at the problem. The problem is, if you throw billions at a legacy technology, you'll end up doing it all over again. And people agree with me on that. So, you know, Coastal, 
Thomas Friedman. And, uh, you know, this, this backs up, um, you know, what John Paul here was saying was you have to have so many activities, uh, you know, Genmar, something, all these companies are just simultaneous efforts. It's 100,000 people in 100,000 garages trying 100,000 things. So that's an absolute credit. And we're going to see a lot of that. I agree with um, John Paul Graffman. But here's the key. We've got to get the entrepreneurs on board. And that's a bigger issue. So far in energy, I've heard a lot of people think monolithic central applications. Because in petroleum, you're rewarded with centralized facilities. You're better off for a number of reasons. Distributed petroleum just doesn't work. And so um, we tend to think that way. Uh, Biofuels companies are hiring people from the petroleum industry, and they're thinking we're going to integrate with That's a problem. I often say that we are, if you compare us to where, we, where the internet was, we are in 1992. And that was when we had Archie, Gopher, Slip, Veronica. Do we have any of those things today? No. So um, everything changed with new technology that allowed everybody to use it. And it actually could make the internet work. So we need to move to a local business model that entrepreneurs can adopt. Believe me, there's plenty of construction guys in California where I'm based who would love to move into our fuels uh, yesterday. But they need to have the prepacked applications. For algae, and I'll just take our example, this means a compact production system with all of the right ingredients. It's all very well to talk about production, but you got to think of about your, your key components. I've got a few uh, applications just to give you some for examples. Now, the key here is, is to make these things completely packaged for finance, for ROI, uh, for you know people having done it before. You know, you always want people want to follow others. If you make these individual granular applications throughout clean tech and about fuels, then you've got yourself the beginning of the tornado of adoption. Technology export. This is a point that I've talked about a lot. We tend to try and build everything ourselves. And that's a big, big, big mistake. We need to start thinking about helping everybody else make stuff. We need to, the, the, you know, we think about, okay, let's build something in New Mexico or let's build it in Arizona or whatever. Well, how about enabling entrepreneurs in Bangkok and Surabaya and places like that to build locally? What are the key points? Refuse to be a producer. Do not produce. Provide technology only. Promote a knowledge industry to help those local entrepreneurs. I've been strongly in open sourcing. For example, in the case of algae, we will share the cookbook of how to make algae. And, of course, to make money at algae in the art technology. But a lot of people in uh, low efficiency areas in the third and fourth world won't need efficiency, they just need access. Simplify, simplify. We believe that it should take no more expertise than building a group. And finally, our model would be very light, low capital requirements, so there can be a lot of us. Of course, this supports the previous two points. And we call it mushrooms after rain because if you simultaneously, in parallel, share knowledge worldwide of what to do, and allow people to locally finance and roll out these solutions, you get what we call mushrooms after rain. Remember that biofuels is probably the lowest capital intensive renewable activity out there on the supply side and a tremendous job creator, far greater than other approaches. Now, I have history on my side. Personal computer. I've been invented the PC. They thought they were going to make every single PC. They were wrong. But every single PC had an operating system. That's what you want to do. Transform society because it was if you built anywhere. We created industries in Taiwan, Korea, and elsewhere uh, out of the fact that they could copy it. And of course, it became a comfortable platform. The model then is premium technology, commoditizing the hardware relentlessly, and getting it out there through technology. 
what we do. Of course, we need to create this great environment. I believe that's happening now. Um, let's remember to fund the innovation. Um, let's work on that rapid adoption by focusing on the entrepreneurs and the granular single applications that they need to have fully productized. Export those innovations so others make it. And we can overtake petroleum by 2030. Thank you.